Hey there folks, Karshal here. Thanks for joining me. I'm getting ready to dive into a brand new No Man's Sky permadeath run just to celebrate the new next upgrade that recently went in. For those that are not familiar with No Man's Sky and the permadeath runs, um, if you die, the computer automatically goes back and wipes your save. So you are done. Your option is to restart. And starting a new game now. And here we go. One of the quirks of No Man's Sky in survival and permadeath, it might even be in normal, I haven't really spent a lot of time playing with that is the starts that it gives you are completely random. You don't know what the planet's going to be like. You don't know what the wildlife is going to be like. You don't know what sentinel activity is going to be. And it can be fatal, even just in this little intro segment where the computer is introducing you to the equipment and saying everything is coming online. If something is there that wants you dead, by the time you can react, you might be. Now in this one, temperature is not too bad, I'm not seeing any sentinels or any animals that are threats, so I'm not feeling too bad about that one. And there's the view in third person, which is new with Next. It used to be only the only thing you had was first person. Now you have the option. Now coming into a world like this cold, as you can see, my hazard suit is already very, very low. I need to find shelter immediately. I'm hoping that running toward this rock shelf I can get to a point underneath it where I'm sheltered enough that my hazard protection can start to recover and regenerate. Checking there, I've got no items that are needed to recharge the suit so I'm just plain screwed. Um, trying to sprint over and get under cover before it's too late. Unfortunately with permadeath games, sometimes you only get a minute or two in the beginning and you're done. And there's not much you can do about it. If you happen to zone in in a really bad place and there is nowhere that you can hide or no supplies that you can use to regenerate, then you're SOL. The game's over. That's one of the reasons why permadeath is listed as being extremely hard on the start menu. Now I thought I saw a banner come up here that I was having temperature stabilizing. That's why I'm kind of looking around. Um, but I'm still taking damage so I'm going to have to do something. Usually under shelves like this you can get to a place where you're protected. Oh, and there's some sodium, and that's what I need. So, hopefully I can get to that before I die. Okay, that takes the edge off a little bit. Um, I'm killing that just because they really annoy me. Um, now that my suit is recharged, as you can see, I've got quite a bit more leeway. I'm actually going to go down and grab this other sodium and the oxygen that is by it just to give myself a little bit more of a cushion as well. Now one of the changes between Atlas Rises and Next is the elimination of a lot of the elements that those of us that have been playing for a while are used to. The sodium plant is completely new. It uses the same graphic that Zinc did and so far serves the same purpose. Another is that has changed is the Thamian 9 which used to be those red plants, now it is straight oxygen, which makes a lot more sense to recharge your life support because, of course, with us, we need oxygen. Whereas Thamian 9, as far as I know, was a made-up element. I hate those whip things. Okay, now I'm reaching a point where I'm going to, again, try to be undercover, but I need to get my scanner fixed so that I can even figure out just where in the heck my ship is. When you start, um, you have no idea at this point with Next even where you're going. 
So the first thing that you have to do once you are no longer at risk of dying is get your scanner fixed so that you can find your ship. Now in order to do that I need to harvest ferrite dust and that comes from small rocks and boulders. Um, there's plenty of them out here in this area. Most places you can find them without a lot of, of effort. Now if you notice there I was pulsing my mining tool. What that does is it allows the heat the beam to mine a little bit then cool down because if you allow it to overheat it shuts down for an uh, indeterminate period of time depending on your upgrades and cooling devices that you may have. Now all I'm trying to do is get up to the 75 dust. Okay, I've got that. I can repair the scanner. And now I can figure out where in the heck my ship is. There we go. Hopefully it is not too far away. I have had starts in permadeath where my ship was 10 to 15 minutes away, and it's like, oh man, that is a problem. Okay, that's not going to be too bad. Going around this direction because I saw that there was some sodium over here, and I'll need that for my ship, or for my suit, just to make sure I have a little bit of a buffer to be able to get there. And now heading for the cop, or heading for my ship. At this point in time, I do not even have a visor installed on my gear so that I cannot scan this wildlife. And probably for the sake of safety, it's best to not worry about that until later. You always have to be watching the suit. I think that I've got enough time with my recharge and the sodium that I've got to run over here and grab this other sodium, do a little mining along the way, and still be able to get to my ship without a problem. It wasn't that far away. You don't always have that luxury. And I can't stress enough, when you're starting a game, make, make the safety of your character number one. You have to be able to get under shelter quick. Hopefully these guys aren't hostile because I'm going through them. Uh, one of those whip things, uh, which of course I didn't see it until too late. Two hundred and twenty units. That's not far. I can get there. I can get there. Hopefully, there's some caves over there too. Caves make a great place to hide. Although once you actually get your ship, it is less important because it is easy to jump right back into your ship and that will provide all the environment shelter that you need. What it will not do, and file this for future reference, is protect you from sentinels. If they are hostile and on you, they will continue to fire at you while you're in your ship. While you may not personally take any damage initially, they will blow through your ship shields and eventually get to you and start damaging your components I've never actually wrote it to the point where it's like, okay, my ship is toast, are they then able to damage me? But I suspect that once the ship can't move, it's kind of irrelevant. Okay, not bad. Ten minutes from time in game to we are actually at the ship and can begin the little mini quest line to get the ship up and running. And I hope you won't be offended. I'm not going to read everything to you as it goes across the screen. Um, there's plenty of time for you to do so yourself. Or, if you are interested in the game, you can jump in and you will see plenty of it. Reading out loud has just never really been my thing. And once we choose repair ship systems, it will actually tell us exactly what we need to do step by step. Some of it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the hermetic seal part, yeah, that one took a little bit more effort. But for the most part, it's just a matter of gathering. Now 
Now the hermetic seal is actually new to the next update, so that took some getting used to. Generally, repairing is all about getting to the items. If you've got it, it'll be highlighted in your inventory, clicking on it. With Next, you can actually go in and do partial repairs rather than collecting everything at once to repair a part. So now that I have the metal plate made, I can choose that item, go and just do that particular piece of it, and not have that item taking up space in the inventory, either the ship inventory or my personal one. And all I need to do to finish repairing that is to acquire a hermetic seal. Now, while No Man's Sky is an open world sandbox type game, there are some initial quests that I do think it is important for you to carry through with up until a point when you are just getting your ship started and fixed. Going through the initial clicks there are very important. So scan what's around you, take part in those activities they provided you, they're critical for further infrastructure. Now this will help us to get the Hermetic Seal. It is a pretty world. They did good with the graphics in the next update. Jumping in the ship to let my hazard suit recharge and do the next step of the ingredients. Or of the repair, not the ingredients. Kind of the same thing. Okay, so. Now I gotta talk to the distress beacon again. And it should have directions that I can follow to be able to get hold of the Hermetic Seal. Okay, if you notice down on the bottom right, it guides you toward what your next steps should be. At this point, it is wanting me to build a signal booster. And in order to do that, I need to collect more ferrite dust. And in a lot of ways, that's kind of what the game is going to be. Every time you refuel your, your starship, you're collecting something to do so. Every time you want to build a new thing, you're collecting something to do so. If that kind of thing isn't your speed for a game, then maybe you might want to be looking at different options. This is not just a point and shoot. Now I have made the metal plate that I needed. It's telling me next that I need to collect carbon. Now carbon is also used to fuel up your mining beam and if you notice in the upper right hand corner my mining beam is at 2%, so it's about to run out. In a way, it's a good thing that I started working carbon, because I'm going to need that to charge it. Just makes it a little bit slower process to get the rest of the carbon that I need for the scanner. Now, by doing it this way, the game allows you to kind of get used to things a little bit at a time and learn the routines of what you're going to be needing to do to be successful. I say successful a little bit tongue-in-cheek because after all this is permadeath, if something goes wrong you're done. It's not that harsh on survival mode and on creative there's virtually no threats. Normal there's a little threat, but on both normal and survival well, on normal mode, you have a grave that you can go back and recover your things. On survival, I think you might. It might be that you do not, and you just continue. You're not wiped from the game. But the items are gone. 
Okay, I have enough carbon now, so I need to go back into my inventory after recharging my suit and build the carbon nanotubes. Yep, I've got enough for it. I'm worried with the recharge if I had spent too much. Now I'm just waiting for my hazard shielding on the suit to recharge. And then I will jump outside and we'll get about constructing the signal boosters to find our way to pick up the hermetic seal. If it's not one thing, it's another, I tell you. Okay, suit's looking pretty good, so I can get out there again. Now, you build the uh, signal booster and other base items by hitting Z. And with the next update, they actually made portable tech. So I can deploy this and then later turn around and loot it to pick it back up again, which is kind of nice. In the past, you could deconstruct them, but you never got everything back. Now you really only have to construct it once unless you choose to leave it, like maybe outside of a base or something. Now, let's see how far away this is going to be. Hopefully it's not terrible. I think it's over there to the left. Nope, that was something else. Okay, 900 units, that's not terrible. That should be doable for us. Now again, look at what your suit is and make sure that you've got the rechargeables. Since I'm going to be going so far, I'm going to go over and grab this sodium, give myself a little bit more leeway, and it's not a huge deviation. There have been times when I've been doing runs where literally I have jumped into cave systems and followed them for an hour just trying to find a way to something that didn't involve going across the surface. I have not checked it out in Next, but in earlier expansions there also were not a lot of sentinels that were in cave systems. So on a hostile world, that could be used to get around. I don't know if that will work anymore though. I actually kind of like this planet. I like the look of it. The environmental hazards are not all that strong. Oh great, the sentinel. That's new with Next. It used to be you could see the sentinels off in the distance. Now with Next they kind of pop out of the ground. Okay, with a storm coming in, I need to get to a cave. I'm hoping that that's what that is. A storm will tear your hazard protection down in no time. Um, hopefully this isn't just a depression in the ground and an actual cave. Oh, good deal. Okay, I should be able to find shelter down in here. Um, that's another change with Next. Every now and then you find um, toxic plants and that kind of thing, which out of nowhere will just start emitting, for lack of a better way to, a better description, gas. And without expecting it, without seeing it or anything else, if you haven't been looking for it, you're just automatically in, in trouble. You know, I have no idea where this one is. I'm sure not seeing it back there. I've run across some caves where they're up on the roof, but I don't think that was the case here. Luckily, it was short-lived, so I'm going to hopefully be able to get out of here once the storm passes. Now, one of the things that I'm going to need to be able to find my ship and to scan for things like this toxic plant is my scanner. Or my visor, as they're now calling it. So, while I'm down here, if I can get hold of the materials to fix it, and good, there's carbon, because that's what it's going to take, then I might as well do it now. 
if you don't do it at this point in the game, as soon as you get to the Hermetic Seal, the next thing it's going to have you do is fix the visor. So I'm shuffling the order a little bit, but not by much. And I've got enough to do that now. But forgot, can't just do the nanotubes. I have to actually make the nanotubes rather than just using carbon. They've added a few additional steps with some of this stuff with the next update. And as you can tell, I'm still getting used to that. Okay, now using the visor, I probably will be able to see that plant. That's an example of the scanning that you can do with it. And for everything that you scan, you actually do get paid. So as a new character, getting your visor up and running as early as possible and scanning things around you matter. Now, as you can see, that hazardous flora flag back there, I can't get a scan of it. Um, but at least now I know where it is and can avoid that. Now, if you look, you can see a little pulsating thingy there. That's the plant. And I'm going to get rid of it. And killing it will yield oxygen, as you can see from the little red tag beneath it. And oxygen I need for life support, so I will consider that a fair trade. Even though it did almost kill me. Now, the storm has cleared, so I'm going to get my butt back out of the cave here and head back over and try to pick up the uh, hermetic seal that I need. I don't know if it's going to be better to go around or go over. Or go around which direction on this thing. Guess we're gonna try down this one and we'll see what happens. I'm glad that the storm was a short lived one. I'm kinda bummed that so far none of these overhangs have been good enough to actually stop your hazard suit from declining. That used to be very handy. I'd always be looking for sh for rock shelves and overhangs you could get underneath. Now if you noticed when I hovered over those yellow crystals, they were putting up an X symbol rather than the standard O that is there for mining. That's because they require the advanced mining laser, laser in order to use. And at this point I'm still using the base level stuff and just don't have that available. We're getting there, slowly but surely. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so we got stabilization, but it doesn't look like it's um, regenerating at all. So if you were in a bad way, you could stop there and not have it get worse, but you would need to find a way then to recharge it. I guess maybe if you could build some like shielding shards or something. I, I'm not even sure if they're in the next update. But those are the kind of things that I've been looking for. Some of those overhangs are enough that your suit will actually start regenerating. Okay, can almost see where we're going. Oh, cool. We get buildings. 
all buildings, um, even the ones that are ruined that you will come across, at least so far that I've run across, have somewhere in them that will allow you to be sheltered from the elements and allow your suit to recharge. So always remember where you see them, it's got potential. Okay, what do we got? And there we get the seal. Okay, so we'll be able to fix that part of the ship. Now, when you're in a situation like this, always look for the universal databases or encyclopedia thingies on the wall. Um, they enable you to learn bits and pieces of language. And at this point in the game, I really can't communicate with hardly anyone. It will still run through its menus, but I can't understand what they're saying. And there are instances where, okay, they're asking for a specific thing or their life support is dying or whatever. And they're trying to tell you what they need. If you don't have the language, you are just kind of SOL. Yeah, checked over here just in case there was something more, but unfortunately there wasn't. But now, where's my ship? Okay, that direction. Do I want to run back around, or do I want to just say screw it and go over the top? I'm going to come up here and get this sodium one way or the other. You can never really have too much when it comes to recharging your life support or recharging your shields. Oh, screw it. I think I'm going to go up. And for this kind of thing, of course, it's just basically burning your jetpack, which does use up your life support. So be aware of that. Oh, kind of a nice little field slash meadow slash whatever. Kind of like it. See some, no some sodium, so I'm going to go grab that. <laughs> and multiple whip things, which I hate. In Atlas Rises and earlier iterations of the game, those uh, tentacle-type creatures really weren't much of an issue. You didn't have to pay much attention to them. It feels different now with Next. I haven't paid attention to actual numbers, you know, like how much of a percentage they're doing damage to or any of that kind of thing, but it just seems like it's like they're a little bit more effective. And that's a good thing. It was too easy in the past. So the damage level has been ramped up. The difficulty level of the game in general has been ramped up. And I think that those are good things. I like that you can collect these on the run. Whoops. Okay, and now we will head back to the ship. Luckily, we're not too far away from the ship. One thing you want to keep in mind, though, we blasted our way up a cliff, so we probably are on a little bit different elevation. And from what I have heard people say, falling in No Man's Sky next can be a little bit more painful than it was. So you got to be careful how you do this. Go ahead and jump right on off, but make sure you keep your jetpack charge available to blunt the damage when you hit the ground. If you burn it all too soon, when you hit, it's going to hurt, and it can kill you. I know that from the old days, and if people are saying it hurts more now, then yeah. But that worked out as a pretty decent shortcut. We'll get back to the ship in no time and be able to finish repairing it.
It is a pretty world. They have really upped the graphics game since the first release of No Man's Sky. They've added a what feels like more texture and life to it. Now that I've got a visor, pretty soon I can start to actually scan that wildlife. I see shadows. But my focus right now is to try to get back to the ship before my um, hazard suit shielding goes away. I could stop and recharge it, but if I can make it back to the ship, that would just save those materials. I think I might be able to make it. Um, 100 units isn't terrible. We're going to find out. It's going to be awful close. I'll do the quick jump thing with the backpack here. Yes, and just barely makes it. Okay, now that we've got that hermetic um, seal, we can finish repairing our pulse engine. That's one less thing, and it actually repaired it with a little bit of fuel in it, so we'll be able to put that to use. Now we got to finish the launch thruster. Now, dihydrogen jelly and pure ferrite are a little bit more involved. The pure ferrite, we actually are going to have to build a refiner and create that from ferrite dust. Um, dihydrogen jelly, I believe we can make just by using the dihydrogen, which is the blue crystal that we have seen a couple of times when we've been running. If you're ever at a loss, just look at the bottom right corner of the screen. If there's a quest line thing you're following, it'll kind of tell you. So it's telling us right now to go out and collect dihydrogen. Now I know I've seen it out here. I'm sure we almost just ran through some. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I can't see what's right in front of my face. Though, in my defense, the blue crystal in the shade on a snowy landscape does not show up very much. Now, it says that I need 40. Um, dihydrogen is one of those things that you're going to use to actually fuel the spaceship, so the more of it that I get, the better. And I'm not particularly upset about hitting the carbon, carbon either, because that's fuel for the uh, multi-tool. So we'll just kind of clear the whole area out here. Okay, it takes care of that patch. Might as well finish off this tree. I also will need carbon for the refiner once I have constructed that. Almost forgot that. Now you can build the, ref the refiner is one of the portable things so you can build it wherever you want. In an environment like this in a new start I like to build it right out in front of the spaceship so that if I have to jump into the ship to regen my suit I can still see that the refiner is working, whether it's stopped or not, you know, and just take my time to do that. Now use the dihydrogen jelly to fix that part of the launch thrusters. The next step is going to be using the pure ferrite, but in order to make that, we have to build the refiner first. So, we need more ferrite dust. I don't know if it's true or not, but I tend to think that collecting small amounts goes faster from the tiny rocks like those, rather than the grainier gray ones, which take longer to mine. 
those probably yield a little bit more but it just seems to go not quite as quickly okay I'm back under the Z menu the portable refiner again I want to set it up in front of the ship so that I'll be able to actually see it when I'm sitting in there and there it's green so that's a good placement location Now it wants you to transfer the items that you want to refine. In this case it's going to be ferrite dust, but there are also refinements for dihydrogen, for sodium, for copper, um, and those are just what I have run into so far. So it's kind of a multi-purpose tool. Now I didn't have enough ferrite dust, so damn sentinels. Um, I've got to go pick up some more. It's telling me I'm going to need 50. Now, Sentinels work a little bit differently here than they do in the old one. Um, the old game, they used to go to a node and then come look at you. Now they just go to the location of the mining. So by running over here and mining here, the Sentinel's not paying any attention anymore. In some ways, they're more of a pain in the butt. In some ways, they're stupider. You know, because I'm still doing the same activity. He just wasn't smart enough to pay attention to it. Now I'll refine this ferrite dust into pure ferrite and then I'll be able to do the final repair on the spaceship. But as you can see in here I'm recovering the um, hazard shield on the suit but I can still actively see that the refiner is working. Okay there it's done. Now loot the stuff back. Now you may notice there's a lot of fuel left in it. When you pick up the unit as a whole, you will get that fuel back. So you don't need to worry about trying to loot that out of it. And our starting ship is now fully repaired. The quest updates, so all systems functional, seek answers among the stars. And yeah, I know, I said I wasn't going to read that stuff, but hey, it's a milestone. And I'll pick up my signal booster as well. And I'm going to end this one here, folks. Thank you for joining me. Um, feel free to comment, like, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Our next episode, we will pick up Head into Space. Until then, Karshal out.